Hi friends, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss the differences between array and array list in Java. Array versus array list is one of the very basic and common questions asked in Java interviews. So you should be prepared with the differences between these two objects. So let's see what are the differences. Before we start with the differences, let's see what are the, let us see what is the meaning of arrays. Okay. So array is nothing but a group of similar elements or objects which are grouped together and can be referenced with a common name. For example, here we see one string called Tom, another string Jim, Ram, Tim and so on. And all these are going to be referred by a common name called names. So it's an array of string. Okay. Similarly, here we have integer of 24, 49, 23 and 33 and they are grouped together and they will, they will be referred with a common name called marks. So these are both examples of arrays in Java. Okay. So concept is quite common or very common to both array and array list. That is grouping of objects and having a common name so that they can be stored or referred with that name. Okay. That is what is array. Now let's go into more details about what are the differences between arrays and array lists. So what is the first difference? The first difference is the manner in which they are declared and how you insert data in the array versus array list. So array size is fixed during declaration itself where array list size is growable. That means it can keep on growing. But array, once you declare the size, while once you declare the size, you cannot change it. So let's see that. So the way you declare array is you say string bracket names equals new string four. That means I want to declare an array of string and I want to store four of them. Okay, that is the meaning of that. I want to declare a string array and I'm calling it names and I want to store four strings in that. So this is the representation of this declaration. Okay. Now, how do you declare a string? How do you declare an int? So in a similar manner, you say, I want to store int values. How many? Four of them. Okay. And what is the name I want to call with? I want to call with the name called marks. So this is the meaning of this declaration. So how do you add data in the arrays? So what you do is you say names, which is the name of the variable, which is here, then give the index where you want to store and give the value. So you have to remember one thing that index always starts with zero. So zero, one, two, and three. If it, if it had got like more than these elements, it will continue like three, four, five, six, and so on. So if I want to store at the zeroth element, I'll say names of zero equals Tom. Similarly, names of one equals Jim and so on. Okay. You can also populate data directly during declaration of arrays. So let's see. So what you're doing is you're saying, I want to have a string array of names and these are the string I want to store. So how many of them are there? There are four strings here. So you are saying, I want to create a array of four elements and I want to pre-populate those blocks or the memory blocks in the array with these string. That means while declaration itself, you are giving the values and indirectly giving the number of elements. Okay. Similarly, here we have int array and here also we are declaring four number, four integers. So while declaration itself, I'm defining what are the, what will be the values and since there are four of them, so it will be having a length of four. Okay. So once declared, you cannot change the size. You cannot then add a fifth element. Okay. But data can be modified. That means you can definitely 
change the value in the zero element of first element or any of them for example if i want to store something else here instead of tom if you want to store sarah you'll say names square bracket zero equals sarah so that's how you can change the name but you cannot change the size of the array what about array list so array list is a actual keyword or actual class in java unlike array for array there is no specialized class name which you you have to use but for array list if you want to declare you have to use the class name called array list to declare the objects of array list so it belongs to the package called java.util and the way you will declare is like this you will say list of string that means i am saying i want to create a list of string and the name of that array list is names and that refers to a array list of string okay so that is the meaning so i am i am just declaring a new array list calling it names and the reference interface is list okay but if you see carefully i have never mentioned the length because you don't need to mention the length while declaring the array list <coughs> here is one more example you can say integer and i want to create a list array list of integers so that's how you declare the array list for integers okay here also i did not mention the length or number of elements i need how do you add data in array list you have to use the add method okay in arrays we used to use names square bracket zero or one or whatever the index and used to give equals to tom okay whereas in this array list you have to say variable name dot add and give the object over here it will be automatically inserted in the zero position because that was the first one which was available then if you say names dot add jim the next available position is one so it will add it over here and it will keep on adding in the next available position whatever you are going to add so that is how you declare and add data into array list okay what is the difference number 2 difference number 2 is the manner in which you retrieve data is different in arrays versus array lists so arrays can re retrieve data using name of the array and you give a index of the element you want to retrieve whereas for array list you can retrieve the data using get method and the index so let's see what that is so for arrays the data is accessed using array name and index as we saw in the last slide so let's say there is a array declared here and you have inserted two values okay now if you want to retrieve the value which is stored in names of zero what you have to do is you have to say what is the names of zero and it will return a string that string is getting stored here okay so while storing as well as while retrieving you use the same manner okay same uh, syntax only thing is while storing names of zero is on the left hand side whereas while retrieving the names of zero is on the right hand side so when you give a variable name and the index in the square bracket on the left hand side it becomes storage whereas the same thing which goes on the right hand side of the equals it becomes retrieval so that is how you retrieve data from arrays okay how do you get from array list so you have to use the get method that is more important most important thing which you have to remember so for example you have we have a uh, list of names and uh, i have added few names now i want to access these names from the array list so what we have to say is names dot get zero so i want to get the name with on the zeroth index so get is the method okay so on the variable name you have to use get and give the index number it will retrieve you the name so in this case it will retrieve you tom similarly get one will re return you jim and so on okay so that was the difference in how to access the data what is the third difference the third difference is the type of data they can hold so array can hold both primitives and objects whereas array list can only store 
objects so let's see so for example in here we have declared one array of int with 4 as the length and on the zeroth element i can store 10 and so on so this is what kind of array this is the array of int which is a primitive java primitive right there are a few other primitives in java like float long double and so on so array you can create array of any of these kind of primitives you can also create array of objects for example string is an object in java so i'm saying i want to store or create a array of string objects you can also create other objects like person or vehicle or anything so the crux is you can create both primitive and object arrays if you want to work with arrays whereas array list you cannot have primitive uh, as the type of the array list okay now what about if you want to store int so in that case you have to use the wrapper so for int the wrapper is integer similarly for float we have float wrapper with capital F or double with capital D those wrappers are used for storing double or float data if you want to store in array list okay so array list will not allow you to create a list of primitive types and if you try that you will get compiled error but you can always have object as the array list fine so that was the third difference the fourth difference is how do you find the length so for arrays there is a field called length using which we can find the length whereas array list has size so for example here you can see we have marks uh, which is having four if you say marks dot length it will return you four here okay and then if i say system dot out dot print ln number of elements it will print four you may ask like if the size is fixed as four why do i need to know the length so one of the reasons to know the length is suppose you want to write a loop for loop and go through each of the elements and print them or do some processing with these uh, array elements in those cases you will need the length so that your loop can work for four times right so the way you find the length is you you say marks dot or the name variable name dot length that is how you will find out how many number of elements are there in the array for array list that similar corresponding method is called size okay there is a method called size so here we have declared one array with and uh, with three uh, objects which are added okay so the size is has become three so if i print it you will get the output of three here so for array the length can be found using the length field or length variable whereas for array list the length or number of elements can be found using the size method so that was the fourth difference the fifth difference is multi-dimensional array so array will allow you to have multi-dimensional data whereas array list only allows single dimensional data okay so if you want to store or arrange multi-dimensional data you have to use array you do not use array list so here for example we can see there are two rows of data with four columns each right so this is a two-dimensional array how it is represented or how you can imagine is getting stored in the memories in this format so this is the row 0 this is the row index 1 this is the column index 0 column index 1 2 and column index 3 okay so if you want to get for example 49 so the row index is 0 so you will give mm which is the variable which is storing this array so you say mm and the row index which is 0 then the column index which is 1 similarly for 82 let's say this one row index is 1 so the first one is the row index so i will say 1 second one is the column index here so this column is 2 so if you use these you can either store or access the data in these cells okay that is how you access multi-dimensional data in arrays whereas array list will allow you to have only single dimensional data and the syntax we have already seen earlier 
Now the last difference which we are going to discuss is the data type allowed. Arrays allow only homogeneous data. Okay, you cannot store different kinds of data in arrays. Whereas array layers, you can store different kinds of objects without a type parameter. So what does it mean? So let's see. So for example, here we have an integer array, right? So once you declare this line, that means I want to store integers. So you cannot store any other data in marks variable apart from integer. Okay, Java will check that while uh, you're trying to add and throw compile error if you try to store any other kind of data in this marks, right? That means you can store only one type of data. So this is called homogeneous data. Whereas in array list, you can store different kinds of data if type parameter is not there. What is the meaning of type parameter? So what is the name of, what is the meaning of type parameter? So look here. So we are saying list of names equals new array list. So I am declaring one array list. Okay. So how Java interprets is that names is going to contain different kinds of or different objects. Okay. Names is a list of objects that is how java will interpret this line so although you are calling it as names you can add string you can add integer you can add double you can add any user defined objects of classes okay uh, and the reason is because all of them are objects so java will not stop you from adding any kind of object however that can cause problems while you are retrieving data because you may not be sure what kind of data is there in the array list, right? So to solve that problem, what Java has done from version 5 is Java 5 is they have allowed you to mention what kind of data you want. So this is called the type. So we are saying this is a list of type string. Okay. So as soon as you write that list of string names equals to new array list of string, this line will ensure that you can only add strings in this array list okay so that is also called generics so when you can define the type of data you, you you can allow you want to allow that is called generics so now it will not allow you to enter integer or double or anything it will only allow you to enter string so this is called type safe whereas in this default implementation you could enter any object okay so this is called this was like not type safe so default implementation of array list allows any kind of data whereas arrays only allow one kind of data based on the declaration of the array type right so these are the six differences and here is the summary of the differences so if you want, you can pause the video here and go through these lists again. So friends, uh, that is all I had for today. And I hope you have uh, found this useful and you will like and subscribe to my channel and also provide your feedbacks in the comments section. I'll be back soon with one more video uh, on the Java interview questions and other and I'm also planning to uh, have more videos in many other topics. So see you then. Until then, have a nice time. Bye-bye.